very warmly to the seat of the presidency of our country and also to congratulate you on your appointment as the ambassador of the Republic of Turkey to, to Ghana. You're right, Ghana and Turkey have had very strong, very fruitful relations for the last 60 odd years and uh, we're looking forward hopefully in your period to, to deepening and expanding these relations even more. Turkey has proved to be a very good friend of Ghana and uh, has been very active in a broad range of social and economic issues in our country. Have your Excellency in this very historic moment. <clears throat> As your Excellency understood, Ethiopia and Ghana have enjoyed more than six decades relations since our forefathers who established OEU and now to this generation of SAU. So during this time, we uh, had uh, a very positive impact between exchanging Ghana and Ethiopia. The, the exchange best practice for the Ghana government and the peoples, and we can exchange best practices for Ethiopia, and we can see our chance for the betterment of for the future of Ghana and Ethiopia's relations. So Ambassador, first of all let me welcome you very warmly to the seat of the presidency of our country. We congratulate you on your appointment as Ambassador of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia to Ghana. You are right. The relations between our two countries goes back a long way, even before independence. And then Goku soldiers fought in the, the war in the time when you were known as Abyssinia. I believe there are remnants of their remains uh, at the cemetery at I guess of Abang. So that's how far back our relations go. And then of course the two leaders of our country at the time, the Emperor Haile Selassie and President Kwame Nkrumah, were two of the principal architects in the foundation of the Organization of African Unity. And we welcome here. And uh, I'm hoping that your tenure here in Ghana is going to be a fruitful one for both Ethiopia and for Ghana. La coopération Sikina qui a toujours existé entre le Mali et le Ghana. Ghana and the uh, Mali have been friends for a long time and it's uh, a great pleasure being this great as an uh, ambassador to the Republic of Ghana. And then uh, have uh, all the opportunities engulfed in Ghana. Le niveau de la coopération soit le plus haut aussi possible pour la sécurité de nos, notre sous-région. Our de notre relationship is not today. It has been long. So we are here and then as one people so that we will consolidate the, our relationship. Excellence. We welcome you and your delegation very warmly to the seat of Bienvenue the avec votre délégation to Jubilee House. Uh, Jubilee House. And to congratulate you on your appointment as Ambassador of Mali to Ghana. Mali and Ghana have had a very privileged historic relationship. We were two of the most important motives of the liberation of our continent from foreign rule. And there was a time when we had a federation 
So that is how close the relations between us have been. We also have a large Malian community that have lived here in Ghana for generations and generations. I've been told there's at least one million people of Malian origin who live here in Ghana with us. They've been successful business people, traders, and they are people who have been very exemplary citizens of our country. So we have a lot of we have a lot of reasons to maintain the proximity between our two countries. Uh, we are members of ECOWAS, and we are anxious that the situation in your country returns to normal, so that very soon the community will benefit from your membership, and from your participation in the affairs of ECOWAS. here today at the Jubilee's house and to be accredited here to Ghana and it's an honor for me to be here with you today. Je voudrais avant tout propos vous transmettre les salutations de votre ami que dit votre frère Son Excellence Monsieur Hassan Ouattara président de la Côte d'Ivoire. I would first of all like to send the greetings of your friend. Not not the friend but your brother, His Excellency Alassane Ouattara. Je voudrais aussi vous remercier pour l'accueil et les attentions dont j'ai bénéficié depuis mon arrivée dans votre beau pays. I would like to thank you for the warm welcome and also for the attention I received since I came to your country. Excellence, je voudrais saluer votre leadership. Votre Excellence, et son Excellent M. Alassane Ouattara pour la mise en place de l'accord de partenariat stratégique qui a abouti à la création de l'initiative Cacao Côte d'Ivoire Ghana. Your Excellency, I would like to commend your leadership. You and Your Excellency Alassane Ouattara, President of Côte d'Ivoire, for the signing of the part strategic partnership agreement who led to the establishment of the Côte d'Ivoire the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Coco initiative. Euh, je voulais aussi vous remercier pour l'assistance et l'appui que vous ne cessez d'accorder à nos frères ivoiriens qui ont décidé de s'intégrer dans votre magnifique pays. I would also like to say thank you for the assistance to our brother refugee who decided to stay here in Ghana. Beaucoup a été fait, mais il y a de nouveaux défis qu'il faut ensemble vaincre. A lot has been done so far, but we have some new challenges that we have to deal with. C'est pour cela que je m'engage à raffermir et à diversifier notre coopération, nos relations de coopération, d'amitié et de coopération d'amitié et aussi économique, commercial, au niveau de l'agriculture et tout autre. That is why I'm determined to strengthen our relation, economic and cooperation. Let me first of all welcome you to Jubilee House, the seat of Ghana's presidency. Dans un premier temps, excellente, laissez-moi vous souhaiter la bienvenue au Jubilee House, qui est la, la présidence de la République du Ghana and also to congratulate you on your appointment as the ambassador of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire to Ghana. Geography, history, blood unites our two countries. L'histoire, la géographie et même le sang unissent les deux pays. 
right from the beginning of our lives as independent nations, we have sought to work together as brothers and sisters. Depuis les indépendances de nos deux pays, nous avons décidé de travailler ensemble comme des pays frères. I think that in the period of President Alassane Ouattara and myself, we've been able to elevate their relationship to an even higher level. Et je pense que sous le mandat de son excellence Alassane Ouattara et moi-même, nous avons vu porter plus haut cette coopération fraternelle. It has been one of the, the lucky incidents of history for me that during my time as president, he was president of Côte d'Ivoire. It was a chance for me, a very hazard, that while I was the president of Ghana, he was also president of Côte d'Ivoire. He is one of the historic figures of our continent. It is one of the things extraordinary of our continent. And it has been a great privilege and honor for me to work together with him. It has been a great privilege and a joy for me to work with him. Many positive developments have taken place as a result. Et en résultat de toute cette alliance là, de nombreux accords de partenariat et de développement sont sortis de cette alliance. Of which the most significant is what you've already referred to, the partnership over our relations in Coco. Welcome to Ghana. Voilà. and best wishes of the custodian of the two holy moxes, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. May Allah preserve him. And also the greetings and best wishes of His Royal Highness Prince Muhammad bin Salman, Crown Prince and Prime Minister. May Allah preserve him. And then also the prayers of all the people of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to, for Allah to preserve you and as well as praise for the government of Ghana and the people of Ghana more progress and prosperity it is great it is indeed a well-known fact the depth of relations between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Ghana which has extended over 60 years based on mutual respect and cooperation in various fields. And I wish to also pledge that my tenure as ambassador of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to Ghana, I'm going to work to strengthen these relations for the benefit of our two peoples. So, ambassador. Let me first of all welcome you to the presidency, to the Jubilee House, the seat of the presidency of our country. And then also to congratulate you on your appointment as the ambassador of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to the Republic of Ghana. Also to extend my warmest greetings to King Salman Abdulaziz Al Saud, the King of the Sa the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and to the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Mohammed bin Saleh. Ghana and Saudi Arabia have good and strong relations. Saudi Arabia has been a very good friend of Ghana. We have, been, we have been the beneficiary of assistance from Saudi Arabia in several fields of national endeavor, which we appreciate very much. 
My wish is that during your period as ambassador, these strong relations will grow even stronger. And the Muslims of Ghana who look forward very much to the pilgrimage are grateful for it. nuestro presidente en la perspectiva de el cambio de deuda por conservación y protección de la naturaleza que es una de las We would like to invite your excellency Mr. President to work together with our president his excellency Gustavo Pedro to do with the exchange of debt when it comes to the conservation climate conservation please Queremos trabajar con Ghana temas de cooperación sur sur y triangular en los temas de innovación, ciencia, tecnología, educación, investigación y fortalecer las economías conjuntas. We would like to work together with Colum with Ghana, uh, apologies, um, in South South cooperation, particularly in the areas of technology and science and innovation and different other areas that we can that would be of mutual benefit to both countries. Fortalecer las relaciones de cooperación sur sur, las relaciones entre Colombia y Ghana. Quiero eh, terminar. Eh, presentando a nuestras acompañantes, a nuestra delegación. Please do count on us, um, Your Excellency, on Col Colombia, in um, different areas that we can work together in um, South South Cooperation. Let me first of all welcome you to the seat of the presidency of our country, to Jubilee House. And also to congratulate you on your appointment as Colombia's ambassador to Ghana. In recent years, the relationship between Ghana and Colombia has been getting deeper and deeper. And we're looking forward to expanding the relationship. And I'm hoping that your period as ambassador here will witness a significant expansion in the relations between our two countries. Your predecessor was a very active member of the diplomatic community here in Ghana. He ended up as dean of the diplomatic community. And the Chargé, the Chargé, who's been looking after your affairs here, is also somebody very active in the diplomatic circles here in Ghana. I think that all of this provides us with a strong basis to see how we can elevate and enhance the relationship between our two countries. Right, so away from the presidency, let's go to the Accra International Conference Center, AICC, where the Council on Foreign Relations Ghana has launched a book to help diplomats and stakeholders navigate through diplomacy and international relations. Now, Ghanaian diplomats have been encouraged to share their experience and knowledge in their field of expertise through memoirs to document past events for posterity 
reference and to also shape the narrative in Ghana and Africa's diplomatic circles. The Council on Foreign Relations Ghana made the call at the book launch of the contemporary issues in foreign policy, diplomacy and international affairs. A unique and lucidly compiled piece that sheds light on the tenets of foreign policy, diplomacy and international affairs, which is believed to serve as a guide to the academia, politicians, diplomats, and all stakeholders. The event was graced by distinguished personalities drawn from the academia, politics, and diplomatic community. The event was graced by distinguished personalities drawn from the academia, politics, and the diplomatic community. The invitees also took turns to address the gathering. A rapidly changing world where borders become blurred and interconnections prevail, the realms of foreign policy, diplomacy and international relations take center stage. It is in this context that we find ourselves embracing the power and the influence of the written world as it enables us to navigate the complexities of our globalized society. A major goal of the Council has been to occupy what we consider to be a vacant space in the area of international relations among CSOs in Ghana. And what we tried to do was to uh, set up a distinguished guest lecture series. And we engaged very distinguished individuals who have dedicated their lives to understanding and shaping the world of international relations. Today, we unveil a compilation of insightful essays, profound research, and groundbreaking perspectives from esteemed scholars, experts, and practitioners. Our distinguished guest speaker, Professor Mensabos, uh, that I'm sure you all know, and Dr. Fred Boama will be taking you through the contents of the book. They are certainly both better qualified than me to perform that responsibility, so I leave that to them. But how, when I, as I read through the book, I was reminded of the power of ideas, ideas that have the potential to reshape nations, bridge divides, and forge lasting alliances, ideas that transcend borders, cultures, and ideologies, and remind us of our shared humanity. Publication, Contemporary Issues in Foreign Policy, Diplomacy, and International Affairs, which we launch today, is the first volume of such a handbook. The speeches are delivered by persons of standing, drawn from a wide spectrum of professions and backgrounds, from political figures to international civil servants, to writers, to diplomats, to academics, to name but a few. Together, they constitute a truly international group. Their publication captures their thinking on a wide range of issues of moment in international relations, issues such as multilateralism, higher education, the fabric of society, governance, and democracy. And this is by no means an exhaustive list. The publication is carefully and uniquely crafted in terms of the depth of substance, as well as the flavor of the ensuing discussion. It is no ordinary handbook. It combines scholarship and reality, often providing perspectives which are thought-provoking and deepen our appreciation of the issues involved, not only at the level of international relations, but also at the national level. 
Such reflection is indeed indispensable for sound decision making and policy formulation and implementation. It brings us full circle to the statement of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration regarding the need for a ready reference. I am informed that the generation that was raised on the power of the written word, that is us, the generation raised on the power of the written word, or as they put it in Pidgin English, book no lie, are the most vulnerable for having been socialized to trust information in writing, we believe everything we read on social media and happily pass it on to friends and relatives. Conspiracy theories on COVID and COVID vaccination have revealed to us the damage that could be caused by the ability to generate information and circulate without any gatekeeping, as used to be the case with news editing and even social accountability as exacted by the spoken word. As pointed out by the AU Commissioner, the Sahel is a major headache at this time. And I say a lot about the Sahel, which you will find in the book. I skip to Professor Wole Shoinka has hit the nail right on the head when he, in his contribution on afro pessimism he points out an obvious truth that it is impossible to marshal any but military responses to these groups in the Sahel, since their goals are to achieve a redrawing of the map of West Africa and install a caliphate. Such maximalist goals admit of no moderation, for how can one persuade them to set their sights lower than that and aim for half a caliphate, if there is any such? Again, who are the leaders with whom one could negotiate, even if one found the option attractive? Since the identities of their leaders are shrouded in mystery, how could anybody purport to negotiate with an organization with no known leaders? Apart from the odd leadership struggle that occasionally makes its way into the news, there is general lack of genuine and credible information as to who is in charge. These realities notwithstanding, the continued use of indiscriminate violence puts everyone at risk, and even kidnappings, and they put pressure on states to act to protect their territories and their citizens. Publisher of the book, the Council on Foreign Relations Ghana, has carefully selected 18 chapters covering 357 pages of these lectures for compilation. It is dated June 2023. The book also comes with three appendices and an index. Design and artwork that adorns the book is of the highest quality, reminiscent of the quality of its contents. Having said this, I'm sure you are curious to hear about the contents of the book itself. But give me a moment to say a few words about CFL Ghana and the relevance of this book. CFL Ghana has a long history, but its current, current lease of life was bettered in 2019 to backstop and support the government of Ghana in its pursuit of foreign policy and international relations in, in, in general in Ghana. As a testament of its role and importance, CFR was launched by the President of the Republic of Ghana with dignitaries such as the current and former Foreign Affairs Ministers, parliamentarians, excellencies like yourselves, members of the diplomatic corps, academicians, traditional leaders, and business leaders among others. The overarching message from the launch of CFR was excellence and solidarity. And I'm happy to note that a number of you who were at the launch, are here today also to support the launch of this all-important book. I'm sure most of you would agree with me that Africa needs to tell its own story. And the existing narrative, controlled by Western scholarship and institutions, is not in favor of us. 
quite clearly, CFR Ghana has launched, was launched with a very clear understanding of this mandate and how to achieve same. It was also clear that there was a yearning gap needed in the knowledge production and dissemination in the field of foreign policy, diplomacy, and international affairs. One of the clearest absence from the field of international relations in Ghana and most of Africa is that of think tanks and African authored books and resources. This book, therefore, is one of the many attempts to fill this gap. And as noted by one of the authors at page 142 of the book, and I quote, learning, time, learning across time requires literacy, the ability to record what you have done in a way that future generations can read and build on. It, it is a sort of an integral part of advanced human learning. So it is quite important that CFR Ghana has taken this initiative to put in hard print the resources that have been gathered over the period of 2019 to 2022. Now let me turn my attention to the book itself. Now, I would want to comment on the approach of the book. And as noted by the chairperson of the launch, the book is very practical in its, uh, uh, in its lectures and the presentations. And this is, I would also call it international relations in practice. And having read the book, if I had my way, I would add practice to the title of the book because it really presents from a very practical experience and perspective the knowledge and experiences of the authors of the book. Let me also say from the onset that the review of this book does not follow the orthodox approach because the book itself is unique in its presentation. It adopts what you may call the Socratic approach at the end of each author's presentation. This gives the audience an opportunity to probe further on the topic that has been presented, as well as related issues that the author is then invited to comment on and give further insights. Towards this end, I have not just reviewed the author's presentations, but I have also reviewed your contributions that you have made over time towards the presentations that were offered by the various authors. Now to the main work. The book deals with a wide range of issues, and as I, as I have already indicated, it covers 357 pages with 18 chapters. That means it's a very voluminous book. Now for ease of the work that I, I was asked to do, I categorized the presentations into five themes. And it is based on these five themes that have done the review. Country Ghana has had a checkered history. I don't think anybody would doubt that. We have lived through events which have disrupted an orderly retention of knowledge of actual events in the country. There have been situations where citizens have actually fled into exile with whatever first-hand knowledge they might have accumulated by actually living through or observing activities in the country. Others have just kept mute, not sharing information out of fear sometimes also out of trauma. In this manner, the country might have lost a good deal of relevant knowledge. Thus, true history of the country has in many instances remained in the hearts and minds of people who have not bothered to put anything on paper for posterity. The situation has led to distortion of facts, 
when the truth of what truly happened still lies or died in the bosom of actors and witnesses of historical events who failed to share. The country's legacy has therefore run the risk of distortion, and I think we all know that. Since the past has not always been appropriately captured, depriving the country of lessons from past events, and there is no doubt that even many of us in this room, as I look around, we have interesting stories to tell because we are the ones who have been privileged to be born and have lived in interesting times. Colonial rule, I bet uh, the people in this room, most of them uh, would have been born during the colonial time. Although I see many young ones as well. And uh, these have been interesting times. Also, we actually witnessed uh, a lot of us in this room the declaration of Ghana's independence. And it, we have lived through a number of coup d'etats, eh? coup d'etat after coup d'etat, etc. For many of us, our experiences have not always been pleasant. And uh, many have been put in a state where they would not dare say anything to be quoted for fear of some form of reprisal or revenge from people whose toes might feel stepped upon. The project which is now being launched is intended to encourage people like ourselves in this room and many retired diplomats and other professionals to share their experiences with future generations through writing their memoirs. Indeed, while writing of memoirs may help to preserve the country's legacy and facilitate gaining of some insights into the past, it might offer also an opportunity through pouring out of one's heart of being healed from traumatic experiences, a sort of catharsis, you know, that happened. Let's bring everything out. That's GNPC. Thank you very much for your support uh, to CFR. Petroleum Commission. Uh, Petroleum Commission is not here. And Supreme Concepts. Um, Dr. Eugene Ousu. So that's Dr. Bumbande. Thank you very much. Dr. Eugene Ousu is next. Dr. Keo Amini. Professor Mary Chinri Hesse. She'll, she'll do it for you. Thank you. Now to our last story, let's take you to the residence of the Ambassador of France to Ghana, His Excellency Jules Amand Enyambusu, where we had a great time as we celebrated Bastille Day last night, July 14th. Now the Ambassador of France to Ghana, Jules Amand Enyambusu, has reiterated the need to build stronger ties between France and Ghana for the socio-economic development of both countries. Speaking at his first National Day 
events since he was appointed as the representative of France to Ghana, the envoy highlighted the various collaboration and programs between the two countries and commended Ghana for her resilience and commitment to be self-sufficient and to improve the living standards of her people. He also spoke extensively on the just-ended Global Financial Pact Summit, which was hosted by President Emmanuel Macron in Paris. The summit focused on the reform of international financial institutions and aims to ensure climate vulnerability loss and damage are not ignored in the international financial architecture. Senior Minister Yao Osafo Mafu led the government delegation and was in the company of the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Madam Shelley Ayoko Buchi. But before that, if I may, I would like us to rewind the real and memorable event of the past year. The excellent nature of franco ghanaian relations was mirrored in a series of interactions at the highest level. In particular, I would like to mention President Akufo Addo's participation in the recent Paris summit on the new financial pact held on 22nd and 23rd June this year, where he made remarkable impact in delivering an address during the closing ceremony. This summit demonstrated the ability of North and South to come together under the aegis of France to find solutions to the common challenges of development and the preservation of the planet and to establish a new method for financing these objectives formalized in the Paris Agenda for People and planet. I would also like to make reference to the bilateral meeting between our two presidents at the French Presidential Palace Elysee in October 2022, which followed the ceremony where the University of Sorbonne conferred open president Akufo Addo a doctor honoris causa degree. In addition, the warm welcome which was extended to the Secretary of State for Development, Francophonie International Partnerships in Accra at the beginning of April this year has helped to intensify and structure our bilateral relationship through a convergence of views aimed at a greater cohesion stability and a stronger regional integration. Finally, as you know, Ghana took a seat on the United Nations Security Council just over a year ago for a two-year tenure and has thus widened her network playing a driving role alongside France on issues contributing to peace and stability in the world. As you also know, Ghana participates extensively in peacemaking operations and her officers are trained in French. Moreover, Ghana has also the brain behind the Accra initiative to bring peace to the region. This major event, despite the political instabilities within the region, 
have enabled us to maintain a close dialogue between our two countries and these rich exchanges will of course continue. Our relationship is excellent at the political level and the same is true of our partnership which aims to support Ghana's development priorities in terms of global issues. I recently had the honor of presenting the Embassy's Action Plan for 2023 and 2026 to the French authorities. This action plan is in line with the new relationship that France which to forge with the Africa continent, African continent, all the African continent. And particularly with Ghana, which President Macron announced in his speech in Ouagadougou in 2017 and further reiterated on Feb 28th this year. The key words are transformation. Speaking in the technocrat jargon of what we call the transformational agenda. The key word I was saying, transformation, partnership, exchanges. Emmanuel Macron is urging us, all the French diplomacy, to practice a diplomacy of attentive and active listening in Africa. A diplomacy that does not seek to instruct, but rather builds side by side with our African partners to support African solutions created by Africa and for Africa itself. Precious occasion, may I reflect on the long-standing relations between our two countries and the dependable partner that France has been to Ghana's socio-economic development. Undoubtedly, our bilateral relations have been characterized by mutual respect, cooperation, and a shared vision for a better international order. We have at all times, at all international meetings, cooperated to the benefit of our two nations. Relations between Ghana and France date back to the 18th century, even though former diplomatic relations between our two countries were established six decades ago, soon after Ghana's independence in 1957. Since then, the bond of friendship has flourished and has transcended diverse spheres of cooperation and partnership over this long period. Today, we partner in the areas of trade, cultural exchange, security, education, and health, just to mention a few. The leaders of our two countries have over the years closely collaborated on issues both at the bilateral and multilateral levels aim at adding momentum to this collaboration to the benefit of our two nations. As earlier mentioned by His Excellency, the French Ambassador, our relations have been characterized by high-level visits by officials of both countries. I recall the recent visit to France a few weeks ago by President Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado to participate in the summit on a new global financing pact organized under the auspices of His Excellency President Emmanuel Macron with the objective of laying the foundation for a new global financing architecture beyond the Bretton Woods system to address climate change, the biodiversity crisis, and development challenges. It was indeed an extraordinary 
moment in history. As I recall the incredible energy, sense of purpose, and the determination to realize a global financing pact that is fit for climate and fit for purpose. We can all say thanks to Macron. There was an overwhelming wave of higher level political support for big changes to the workings of the global finance system. The need to develop powerful coalition to address the debt and climate crisis was also highlighted alongside the need for multilateral development bank reforms. The scaling up of innovative climate financing mechanism, the speeding up of climate action to ensure that we maintain the 1.5 degree Celsius temperature limit, as well as the need for a regional approach to green investment to facilitate the transition to low carbon economies. I am optimistic that the conclusions reached at the summit will be implemented to address issues pertaining to access to finance by vulnerable countries like Ghana in the near future. To quote His Excellency the President, we want, we want sustainable financial reforms that take into account the everyday realities of climate change. Should we fail to achieve any of these outcomes, we will only be settling ourselves and our economies up for failure. This we cannot afford." Unquote. Indeed, the summit afforded Ghana and other developing countries the opportunity to mobilize with one voice and bring the developing world's attention to the need for reforming the global financial system and directing significant financial resources towards adaptation and mitigation action that keeps the world below the 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold. Clearly, ours are two nations committed to creating a fairer, more equitable world, and we must not lose sight of the potential of our partnership to transform millions of lives on our continent. You know how we do it, we'll be taking our cameras around. We'll be talking to a few of the people who have been invited here. Like I said, the diplomatic community will be here to support the event. Lovely. I mean, green looks great on the two of you. Yeah, and I love what you are wearing. Talk to me, what's your name? My name is Harriet. I host Diplomatic Affairs and I serve as the Dean of the Press Squad at the Foreign Affairs Ministry. May I humbly know who you are? Nice to meet you. My name is Ope. I'm French and Cameroonian. Yes. I'm working for a training company, Snetor. Yes. So, I mean, uh, I, 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 how did you get here? <laughs> oh, I'm doing a special program. Um, it's called v v -E -E in French. It's for young young people from European Union. You can do like um, 24 months abroad for a French company. So me, I'm working for Snetor. Yes, a trading company in the plastic fields and chemical. And yeah, it's been like four months I'm in Accra. I was just about to ask how long you've been in Accra. Do you love it in Accra? Oh, a lot. Is this your first time though? First time in Ghana, yes. Yes. Ghana is amazing. People are so lovely. Well, we are Africans. What do you expect? We are one people. We are one people, right? Yes. And let me talk to you. Hi. My name is Harriet. Pleasure. And who are you? So I'm Maiva. I'm from France. And actually I work here uh, as a like a direct project in a um, distribution company so we distribute music and stuff for young people on some platform our platform is like, is like audio mag boom play it's called TMA music 
is in Tui and it uh, means like listen to me. So yeah. Well, this is what I call cultural diplomacy. There you have it all, whatever you want to call it. But these are amazing women I've just met here at the party. We are partying at the residence of the French ambassador to Ghana. And it's been amazing. It looks like the whole of Accra is here tonight and we can't have enough of them. I'm going to make their business my business. So the show is Diplomatic Affairs. And once again, it's all about diplomacy and international relations. Follow me, ladies. Mwah. Love you. Thank you so much. And you look gorgeous. Uh, my name is Cedric. I'm the MD of a shipping agency. And what I'm doing here is celebrating the Bastille Day with my French friends. Is it a French company? It is a French company, yes. So now I know the link. I can actually, you know, tell the connection between your company and being here tonight. So that's why I asked, you know. It's good to talk to you. I hope you're having fun. Uh, you I hope you're having fun. I am having fun, definitely, yes. Enjoy the rest of the evening, enjoy the rest of the evening. Hey Duncan! <laughs> Hello! Cheers! Okay! <laughs> Santé as we say in French. How do we say that in French again? Santé. Santé. Oh, that means cheers, right? It means we wish you health. Okay! Are you having fun? Yes, of course. I'm super impressed by this 14th of July. I think it's very beautiful. The decoration is top notch. And the food is amazing, and the drinks also. I haven't eaten yet, and you ate, and you are telling us about the food. That's so unfair. <laughs> you should try, especially that tonight. I'm super honored because um, on the buffet there's some of my bread that my company does. Tell me about your company. So I'm a French bakery, um, artisanally, everything homemade. We work with sourdough, and um, we do it the French way, the old French way, the traditional way. And tonight, um, our bread is served for everyone. So I need to taste it, right? I I'm going to have to put this microphone somewhere and, and join the queue and grab myself some bread because the queue is very long. Yes, it is. And you have to take a piece of bread, some cheese, some ham, and enjoy it the French way. I'm taking your diplomatic affairs. My name is Harriet Nate, and I'm here with my family tonight. Yes. These are no strangers to diplomatic affairs. I'm so excited to see them. Of course, it is Bastille Day. Everybody is here. I don't know. I think the whole of Accra is here. You think so too? I think so. And I'm very surprised to see you from Paris. Bonsoir, Harriet. Oui, oui, oui. Bonsoir. And Rita, can we just leave it there? No, I'd like to hear about your experience in Paris. It was beautiful. It was a lot of work as well. What do you want me to say? La ville de l'amour, the city of love. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Anrita of Iraq, and um, we are friends, we are family, and it's always nice to see her. And of course, we have our boss here looking all good. Ready? <laughs> I'm back from Paris. How have you been? Fantastic, thank you very much indeed. Very busy, but very, very good. Thank you so much. What's cooking, Rene? It's been a while. Oh, what's cooking is that I've set up my own business now, still in the hospitality industry. So, uh, never been more busy. So, uh, Accra is great. Life is full of fun. And this is what we make it. So, lots of business, lots of stuff going on. Lots of exciting things going on. And I'm sure we are going to be let in very soon. Oh, yes, ma'am. You'll be the first one, as always, to know. So, a uh, lot of very exciting things coming. Yes, we're always the first to know. Rene Vincent Ernst, of course, thank you so much for talking to us always. Yeah. Enjoy the party. Okay. How is the evening going? It's, it's going really well. It's better than expected. What's the connection? Are you French? You own a French company or you work with an embassy? Um, we have some connection to the French embassy, yes. Yeah. Awesome. My name is Harriet. Are you are? Angela. All right. Have fun. I, I'm gonna leave you alone to it. <laughs> How is the evening going? It is Bastille Day and the French people are excited. What's the connection? What are you doing here? Um, actually, a friend of mine invited me and I've been having fun since. So yeah. You are crushing our party. Am I crushing your party? No, your party is crushing me. <laughs> I like that. Thank you so much for talking to us. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Okay. It is the National Day of France and it is Bastille Day. We are here to celebrate with the people of France.
Africans and of course the entire French community right here in this country. We have a solid relationship and like I said very soon I'm going to be hosting the Ambassador on Diplomatic Affairs for us to delve into bilateral relations between French and of course the Ghanaian people. What? Hello! The Ameo! The, the Ameo! The, look at this boy! <laughs> The AMEO is in the building, people. This goes a long way to tell you the beautiful relationship between the embassy and, of course, the entertainment industry or the media in Ghana. And, of course, the media has a role to play when it comes to the socioeconomic development of our beautiful country. So I have AMEO here. I'm going to ask him anyways what he is doing here. AMEO, it's been ages. I know, right? The last time we met, we are in somewhere... Far away, Morocco. It's been like a year already, wouldn't it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. It was a tonight, of course, uh, France National Day. Uh, great event, you know. I think from the media point of view, and same point of view, Aunt Sophie Abe last year, when she was leaving, we were wondering what is going to happen after she's gone because she had really brought together the media, the entertainment space together with the embassy. And so we're looking forward to see what will happen. And then here we are, uh, really amazing night, well, well thought through. And if you look at the program, different segments talking about and highlighting different things that the French embassy is doing in Ghana. And of course, key amongst them is the creative industry, sports, etc. So I'm happy to be here. Lots of amazing music. Uh, Real Boss is amazing. We can't have enough of them. I tell you. Mr. Simon is amazing as well. And then their band. Amazing. <laughs> I can tell you are having a good evening. I am, I am. I know you are working as well. Yeah, we are trying to update the world. What's happening in Ghana in terms of the National Day for France. Thank you so much for talking to us. It's always a good time to talk to you. Have a great evening. France anniversary and we were invited to another occasion. Come and celebrate with the French people. French people, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You're in the company of my company, uh, Wings Zone Travels and Business Consult. Maxwell, my co-director. And then my senior man. <laughs> our, our senior man. Our, our senior man. Hi, Hi Maxwell. How are you? I'm doing very good, man. It's an evening treating you. It's very good. It's, it's amazing to see such a lo lovely people, uh, such a uh, lovely people here at this very occasion. Have you tasted any of the food yet? Very nice. Very nice food. Very nice. Put this microphone down and go and grab something to eat. Okay, that's enough. That's so unfair. All right, cheers, guys. Yeah. Hi, uh, stranger. Mm -hmm. Stranger, stranger. Kobe was telling me, so Harriet, you got back from Paris and you haven't reported yourself. Saba, 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 Terrapian. Bonsoir, 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 bonsoir. Okay, Kobe, that's enough. How have you been? Amazing, amazing. Kobe Che is a very prominent personality in our society. And we are not just talking about the blogging space, you know. We are talking about producing a very, very good content that would impact our society. I'm proud of him. He's a brother. We've been doing a lot together. We've been globe trotting together. We were in South Africa together. And I'm so happy to see him. He's everywhere. These days, he's so much everywhere in the diplomatic community. Kobe. I know why you are here. All the same for the sake of our cherished viewers. What are you doing here? I'm here to celebrate with the French people and I'm happy that there's always been that collaboration and that partnership with Ghanaians. I mean, the fact that they don't celebrate these events uh, alone because, I mean, um, they could have just invited only the French community. But, I mean, here is the case. We've invited everybody, especially from the creative uh, space, from the sports space, from agriculture to transport. We're trying to holistically try to bridge the gap from that diplomacy point of view and that's so i mean the layman so i'm happy 
to have come here to connect. And apart from what is happening, you can see a lot of also networking, which is also very important. All right. Businesses are happening. So People are connected with me. They want to do business with me. And it is happening right here at French enjoy. National Day. And it's, uh, it's also happening around the globe as well. So I'm happy to be a part of it. And we celebrate uh, France. And we want to say thank them, whichever means that they've used in making sure that they help build the nation Ghana. We appreciate them and we look forward to a bigger picture. We appreciate the French people and also we appreciate the ambassador of France to Ghana, His Excellency Jules Ahmad Anyambusu for a great event. And so it's been a good evening. We are not done yet. I see a few dignitaries trying to exit. We'll do our possible best to get in touch with the ones that we can get hold of and have a conversation. Kobe, thank you so much, guys, for talking to us. <laughs> the ambassador to Ghana, he's a good friend of everyone. Everybody in this country, and we are excited to have you. Joyeux 14 juillet à tous les amis français. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. <laughs> okay, guys. It's amazing. For me, La France is my second country, and um, we celebrate the 14 juillet. Avec uh, beaucoup de joie, with, um, with a lot of joy. And uh, to all my French friends, I say happy, happy or joyeux 14 juillet. Merci. Thank you so much. That everything is fine. All right. We enjoy everything is fine. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And um, we appreciate whatever is happening. We do love France. We do love our ambassador. We appreciate whatever um, France is doing for Ghana. And we appreciate whatever is happening. We thank you. And also thank you for your presence. Thank you for having us too. Okay, sir. Let's are you also a staff here? No, I'm from European oh, Union. Oh! I'm driver. Okay, that's good. Are you having fun? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm having fun. Having fun. Thank you so much. Welcome. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Hey! Ah, ah. Are you having fun? I'm having fun, my dear. I'm having fun. I'm having fun, my dear. It is the National Day of France. What is the message? Sure, you know, France and Ghana now are like a family. And the message is that the unity, the oneness should continue. Thank you so much, sir. Enjoy your evening. Oh, what is it? <laughs> okay, people, so yes. I told you, I make their business my business, forgive me. <laughs> I'm not a diplomat, so this is allowed. My name is Harriet, the show is Diplomatic Affairs on Pan-African Television, and our job is to bring to our viewers happenings in the world of diplomacy and international relations. 
let's talk about you guys. You look really nice. I like what you are wearing. Really nice. Let, let, well, tell me your name and let's talk about tonight. Are you having fun? Yes, I'm, I'm really having fun. By the way, my name is The Dawn. The Dawn? Yeah. What's the connection? The co <laughs> <laughs> that is a secret, yeah. But I love to give it that one for But the most important thing is that you are here to share this day with the people of yes, France. Because I love France. That is what I've been so joining for so many years. So you've been to France? Uh, yes. As they are doing their independence day today, it was a privilege for me to be invited to join them to have a nice time. It's, so, it's a privilege for all of us to be here and celebrate with them. Yes. Thank you so much for talking so to well, me. Well, Let's talk about you. Yes. How are you? I'm fine. You're looking good too. You're not looking bad yourself. Oh, I'm flattered. Yes, I've been watching a lot of your shows. Oh my God. Let me first applaud you for the good work you are, you are doing. Thank you. You are getting us closer to the various diplomatic missions and high commissions around, which is a very good job. It's not easy, but I will envy you because at the point, you are going to go all over the world and I will not get the chance to be <laughs> there with you. I'm always going to be here for you. I'm here for Ghana. Ghana is the only country we all have, whether we like it or not. Therefore, we, have, we all have a role to play in all of this, right? To make it a good country. Let's talk about you. Are you having, have, having fun tonight? Oh, yes. Uh, I am, we have been partners with the French Embassy, EIB Network. I'm head of marketing for EIB, Akan Cluster. Okay. We have been partners with this uh, French Embassy from, uh, for some time now. And then I had the privilege to be part of the team who coordinated the media for this event. And so, working with Fanny and Juliet and the likes had given me the opportunity to be part. And tonight, you see what spectacular events they are putting together, letting us have a feel of their independence day. That is what happens in the various missions across the world. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that from time and time, the people of France have also shown their love for Africa, especially Ghana. And it is good that we keep that relationship going. And I'm happy. We have seen a lot of the cuisines, which is somehow new to some of us. But we are trying it because, hooray, it's National Day for France, yeah. so, yes. We are going to be talking to the people in this house without talking to this table. Uh -huh. They definitely have to feature. And of course, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. And of course, if they have any message for the people of France, and of course, the French community, they can share them with us. Hello, everyone. Hello. Let, let's start from here. My name is Harriet. What's yours? Lola. What's the connection? Do you work with the embassy? You work with a French company? What are you doing here? I'm doing an internship at the NGO Plastic Punch. Are you having fun? Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you look lovely in that dress. Thank you very much. What's the name? My name is Naomi, or you can call me Naomi. Okay, so Naomi, I prefer Naomi. Is that okay? Are you having fun? Yes, I'm having a lot of fun. 14th July is always a good opportunity to celebrate our French community and the French uh, work in Ghana and to meet new people, interesting people who are contributing to French Ghanaian friendship. Thank you so much. And we are excited to be part of this celebration as well. Now you. Hi. No, hold on. I'm going to come here. Hi. Hey. It's good to meet you. How are you? I'm doing so well. Yourself? I'm doing amazing now that I've seen you. Let's talk about tonight. How is it going? Oh, it's an amazing night having lovely people come around to share the love we have within and abroad. And um, so we want to say a very big thank you to the French Embassy for the invitation and for bringing like-minded people together to share in this amazing um, victory over the years. Yeah. Right. Happy Bastille Day to France. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much. Now here you are. Oh, no. <laughs> no, <a> <laughs> now let's talk. Hi. Let's talk about I know you have a very good solid relationship with the French Embassy. Yes. You do a lot of things together as well. Let's talk about some of the things you do together. Great, yes, so the, 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 the French government or the French Embassy in Ghana has been very supportive for our work at Plastic Punch. 
you know we are an NGO raising awareness on the um, dangers of plastic pollution and coming up with solutions. So with the French Embassy, they supported the Plastic Punch series, which you should check out. Uh, it's really great, raising awareness on the issues and coming up with solutions. As well, most importantly, is um, working on solutions, uh, for which we've had a research um, with ISTOM, which is an university in France, uh, Manger, to find out how we can uh, replace plastics from fossil fuel base to alternative packaging materials like cassava, maize, and all the post harvest laws we find over here. Agropyritech as well, um, to work on our water quality and to do some study on our Ghana water and its provision for clean water. So yeah, we're very happy with the French government and its collaboration uh, towards Ghana in achieving the SDGs. Uh, France was really great to host the Power Our Planet concert uh, with Global Citizen, where we put pressure, or we call on global leaders um, to raise or uh, to, to mobilize the right financing um, to fight climate change and also to make um, um, zero poverty, to achieve zero poverty. So yes, um, the, the, the Embassy of France or the French government is really a very key partner in, um, in achieving the mitigations towards climate change and also all what we set out to achieve at Plastic Punch. And by the way, he's going to be on my show very soon, so we'll be talking about a few things that are going on when it comes to some of the beautiful things that they are doing in the country, educating us and of course 